Welcome to this Facebook Ads Beginners course. My name is Superman, your superhero on Udemy. The whole point of this course is to give you all the basic information you need to understand Facebook ads and give you a basic skill set so that you can run campaigns, build an audience, run ads and be able to navigate comfortably through the Facebook ads manager. Now, if you want to really build on this skill set with some advanced Facebook ads, then the best thing that you can do is go to the Complete Facebook Ads and Facebook Marketing Course 2016 and 2017, which is also on Udemy. But the point of this course is to give you a basic introduction on Facebook ads and understand how it can be absolutely vital to your business. So let's get straight into the action. This first video is going to be focusing on navigating the Facebook ads platform and there are three basic places where you can access Facebook advertising. You can do it through your fan page, you can do it in Ads Manager and you can do it with a tool called the Power Editor. So think of these as beginner, intermediate and advanced. For discussion purposes we're going to go right to the bottom line Ads Manager is the place where you want to do all of your ads, okay? Especially if you're a beginner. You can boost posts and promote stuff from your page. So if you hover over the promote button, you can see all the things that you can do with your page. I mean, just about everywhere you look right now with these blue buttons, you can advertise with Facebook. You know, you can promote your page, you can boost your posts, and of course you've got the promote tab here. But you don't want to do any advertising from your page. Why? Well, it may be easier because it's so easily accessible to you right there, but this ease comes at a cost. You won't have as much control over your ads as you would if you went into Ads Manager. Ads Manager is where pretty much all Facebook ads people do their ads. And, you know, even if you were to promote something on your page like there or there, the results would be in the Ad Manager. So if we click in the promote button here, you can see all the promotions at the bottom. That will take you to your ads manager. If you go up there on the top, if you go to create ad or manage ads, that will take you to the ads manager. But the easiest way and probably most accessible way is to do it via your profile. So let's go here. And if you take a look on the left hand side, it's not in mine at the moment. But if you look in your apps, then you will see adverts manager in here. So you can actually select Adverts Manager as well as any of these apps. Go to this settings icon and add to favorites. And as you can see, that's what I've done here. I've added to my favorites. And if you've got a lot of favorites and some are more important than others, you can actually rearrange the order right there. But because Ads Manager is a big part of everything that I do on Facebook, it's pretty much the second thing under my newsfeed. So what I'd recommend to you to do is to put your Adverts Manager app into your Favorites tab so that it's always there and accessible. So if you click into the Adverts Manager, this will take you into the default screen. Now if we look at this page, there are so many things you can click on here. And it would take me, gosh, it would take me ages to take you through everything and what everything does. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make things clear, simple and not confusing. So I'm going to give you a run through on what's happening on the left hand side here. And then come across here real quick, then go into the top left hand side. And I can tell you that just by going on here every day and doing a little something, you will learn how everything works. And if you want to stop right now and practice, you can have a look right now. But either way, I'm going to take you through an overview of everything so that everything makes a bit of sense to you because this is quite a lot to kind of get your head around. So just take this journey with me right now. Firstly, in the top left hand corner, you've got the F. That will take you back to Facebook. And then right next to it, we've got the Ads Manager. So if we click into here, the first thing that you see is the Frequently Used column. Now, Ads Manager will always be at the top because it's the main function, really, of the adverts. Then you've got all of the ones that you've probably used most recently. But if you click down here where it says All Tools, then you are given five other tabs. 
and there are various different options for each of the different objectives that you can have with Facebook ads. So at the moment, this is what the Adverts Manager tab will show you as of October 29th, 2016. Now, it doesn't really matter what you press. Any of these pages won't do any damage. It may be difficult to understand some of these and what they do, but nothing will break. So feel free to have a look at any of these. The ones that I use all the time are audience building or audience insights. Now audience insights is an incredible research tool where Facebook basically makes all their information available to you so that you can build super incredible high performing audiences. I don't know who you are but are more likely to react or interact with your ad than other people. And I'm going to teach you how to use this in a little while. Power Editor is one of the advanced places to advertise. Now, Power Editor is a tool that enables you to create ads very quickly, duplicate ads. It also allows you to produce ads that don't appear in your timeline, but do run as ads. Now, just to let you know, Adverts Manager is going to have 99% of the things that you need for creating adverts. The Power Editor is more for the advanced user that wants to do things a lot quicker. The Power Editor is not as user friendly as the Ads Manager. Then you've got Ads Reporting, Custom Conversions when you get into Conversion Tracking with, with Pixels. Custom Conversions will really help you there and so will Delivery Insights. Then we go to Assets. It'll take you to the audiences you've used, the images that you've used, the pixels that you've created. But you can see that the most common ones that you're going to use are probably these three. The Adverts Manager, Audiences and Audience Insights. Now the great thing about this tab is that it doesn't really matter which page you go in. So for instance, if I click Audiences, this will take me to the audiences that I've created. If I want to return back to the Adverts Manager, all I have to do is click up here and it will present me with all the pages I can go to and you just click Ads Manager. Simple as that. So now moving down the list a little bit, this button here, this will allow you to select all your different accounts, but I've only got one, so we can leave that as is. This button here doesn't do much other than let you save a new report. So if you like reports, if you want to export the data from your adverts that you want to show to your boss or you want to have so that you can see your progression, then you can save your reports in here. Below that is the default view for your spend. So this will show you your spend in the last seven days. So at the moment, the only ad I'm running is my page like ad. And as you can see here, I'm basically paying 0.03 of a cent per like, which is insane. I've basically spent only $630 to get 180,000 likes. And these are genuine people. And this is what's reflected in my past seven days spending. So if we move down to all campaigns, if we click on that, this will allow you to sort the information that is displayed to you right here. So this shows you all the campaigns. So I have basically ran 63 campaigns across all of my pages. If we go to the advert sets, which are basically the people I'm advertising to within a campaign, this will provide to me all the advert sets that I have been targeting. Then if I click on all adverts, this will show me all 83 adverts that I have ran in the past. So what I like to do is sort by the most simple, highest level and go to all campaigns. And I can sort this by active and inactive. So then we'll go through the columns now. So we've got campaign name. So this will take you through all of the various campaigns that you have run, whether they are Facebook like campaigns, whether they're page post engagement campaigns, all of the campaign names are down here. And then we've got their delivery status. So at the moment we've got active and inactive. And then here we've got the results. Now, once you click into the results, it will show you your best results from highest to lowest. If you click it again, it will take you right to the bottom. The same for reach. This will take you from highest to lowest. So same for costs. So by all means, play about with this. But if you want to go back to your default position, all you do is you go to campaign name and then you click delivery and it will take you back to your default position.
All right. Then you've got the create campaign button right here, which is a way of creating a campaign. But I almost never use this. What I do do instead is I go up here to create advert. So let's just go straight into create advert so that you can see what happens when you start the process. So typically what will happen when you click on create an advert is Facebook will ask you what is your marketing objective. And there are three sets of objectives that you can go for and all the various campaign types within them. Okay, so if we want to go back, all we have to do is just go into the adverts manager tab here and then click on adverts manager and it'll take you straight back to it. So what I would recommend is that you just have a practice with all of this. Because this is where you'll start to get comfortable with everything and getting comfortable with sorting everything. But this is something you'll probably be doing the more that you actually do ads in the future. So top right hand corner. This button up here is one of the most important buttons. I mean, if you go here, this will just take you to who you are, your details and login information. And of course, you can log out of the adverts manager. Up here, you've got the search and this will give you your recently used ones. So this will allow you to search within the actual adverts manager. Then you've got the notifications buttons and this will show you what's happening on all of your pages. And I have got quite a few pages. This will show you all of your pages. And then this, the help button. And then this is the help button. So why is the help button important? Because this is where you can actually contact Facebook. Okay. They will call you on the phone if you request a Facebook marketing expert to do it. Because there are so many millions, well, there's, well, there's 1.7 billion people on Facebook. But there's only a couple of hundred million that are actually using Facebook for ads. So these guys want to keep you happy because you're actually spending money with them. So when you go into contact a Facebook marketing expert, here you go. You can actually schedule a call with them. And you just give them all of your information Submit when you'd like them to call you and then submit that. Again, you can contact Facebook and it takes you to the support page. So what can we help you with? And there are a number of different topics that you can choose dependent on what your need is. And then you've got the top questions here where the most commonly asked questions are and possibly most of your queries may be able to be answered there. So we'll come out of that. And we'll get out of here. Then we've got these buttons here. So here you can search for your campaigns. And you can search by a campaign name, your ad set name, your campaign ID. And then filters. Filters allows you to filter all of your different campaigns. And buy these different options down here. So for instance, what you can do is you can sort by active and inactive. So if we take everything else off. You could just have your active campaign running. So if I take off the active one, then we can look at objectives. So if I want to look at app install campaigns, I can have a look at them here. If I want to have a look at page like campaigns, I can have a look at them here. So this is a really great way of just being able to filter the different ads that you've run. Then we can go to lifetime here. And this is where you can sort the data down here by date. Okay. So at the moment, this is showing all of my ads lifetime performance. OK, so this is how this has performed in its lifetime. We can look at how it's performed in the last 30 days and then click update. And then it will show you your results in the last 30 days. Now, this is really the campaign that I've been running in the last 30 days. And it will show me how much I've been paying per like. We can look at today. And this will show you your results specific to today. So currently I've spent $1.58 and I am paying 0 0.004 per page like. And I'll talk more about how you achieve these costs later on. But this is just to give you an idea of how you can sort by date. So we'll go back to lifetime. Now, in this little section here, they normally show you some tips. So how you can get more festive season shoppers, for instance. And this is advising me how I can reach more people with lookalike audiences. And then it will say here, grow your audience with lead adverts. So this stuff is really useful. But if you don't really like to see it, you just click the cross 
and then it's all gone and then it says no tips to show at all so let's look at these buttons right here so if we look at export this is a way of exporting information from your ads in the form of a spreadsheet so that's all it's for you can save it as an xls or you can save it as a csv report you can also share your reports okay so if you're doing reporting you'll probably want to export it from this position here now this breakdown button is super useful because what happens is if you select any of these options Facebook will sort your ads based on whichever one you choose. So if we go to age, for instance, then what it will do is it will actually show how your ad is performing per age group. So this is gives you really good data as to how age groups perform against each other. So here we can see the difference between 13 and 17 and how that's performing to 18 and 24 and how that's performing. So I'm actually paying less for my 13 to 17 year olds so how cool is that so this is really super useful and the other cool thing you can do is you can apply another filter and you can see how the age groups for instance are doing in a certain time period so if we look at the last 30 days so it will actually say that in the last 30 days they've both been equal in how in how much they've cost so traditionally, the 1824 has been more expensive, but in recent times, I've managed to get that cost right down. So super, super useful stuff there. So this takes us to our last button, which is performance. And this is quite an important one. OK, so this is where you can see how your ad is performing under certain criteria. OK, so if I really want to concentrate on how things are going with my video stats, then I can look at video engagement and it will tell me all of my metrics relevant to video engagement. So you can see how many views I've had, how much it's cost me, how many 10 second views that I've had. If I want to have a look at general engagement, then I can have a look and see people taking action. So in the last 30 days, for instance, there have been 47,000 people that have taken action in my likes campaign, whether that be actual page likes, post reactions, post comments or post shares. So you can sort this basically by whatever information is most important to you. But if you want to sort all of but if you want to sort your performance by some custom metrics, what you do then is you go to customize columns and this will allow you to select the different metrics that you track against your results. OK, so you can have a look at performance related results, cost related. You've got the videos. You can look at the actions. You can look at the cost per action. You can look at websites. You can look at all sorts and you can select all if you really want to. So that's what I've done, actually. If you look at this one, post ad full, this will show you everything that my results can be judged against so if we go across here so if we go across here we can see everything and this tab's frozen so that you can see which campaign you're viewing the results against and you can see everything right here really really useful stuff so going into customize columns really allows you to look at your results against what are the most important metrics to you. You can do a quick view by just selecting the different tabs here. Now, if we click on a particular advert, what we are presented with is some more data. OK, this will give you a better view of how your ad is performing. OK, so you can see all of your ad sets right here, these are all the countries that I am basically advertising to. This will show you the top line information. So in the last 30 days, we've had 47.9 thousand results. We've had 274 thousand people reached. We've got the amount spent on this particular campaign. And you've got a view right here of how it is performing. So you can see the peaks. You can see the days that it's doing particularly well. You can then go back to that particular day and see if there was anything that influenced this. So there we are. So I have now taken you through the Facebook Ads Manager page and all of the different options. So I hope this has really helped and I'll see you in the next lecture.
Welcome to another lecture. This is arguably the most important lecture. Now we're going to be building an audience. This is undoubtedly the most important lecture of the series. And the reason why is because when it comes to targeting people for your ad, if you target the wrong people, you are essentially not going to get the results you want and furthermore, you're going to be wasting money in the process. It's a bit like selling ice to Eskimos. If you're selling to the wrong people, you're not going to be getting results. So, building an audience, the right audience, the target audience, the appropriate audience for your product, for your page, is essential if you want to get results. So, when you go to this page... This is the advert set page. This is where you define your audience, budget and schedule. It doesn't really matter about the objective, whether it's promoting your page for page likes or whether you're trying to get some page post engagement. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is the skill of targeting the right audience. So on this page, what you do is you select the page that you want to promote or the page that your page post is part of. And this is building an audience from scratch. So the first thing you can do is use a saved audience. And I've got a load of saved audiences here. And I've also got some custom audiences as well. But I'm going to avoid that. We're just going to create a completely new ad. So the first thing that you're given is a location set. What country or location are you looking to find people in? So if you're a local business, so for instance, if I were to live in let's say Hackney in London, then if I put Hackney down, I could specifically have my ad appear in front of people in Hackney. If I wanted to target people in London, let's say, then I could put London, England, and then I could exclude a group as well. So let's say I wanted to include everybody in London except for Hackney, then what I could do is I could ignore Hackney. And then you can select the radius of which you want to target or exclude people. OK, so this will give you London and 40 kilometers around London. And you can just put current city only or you could go to cities within radius and you can select the radius. You can select how far away you want it to be or how close. So in this instance, we're just going to put current city for London. And we're going to put current city for Hackney. OK, so we're excluding this area and we're having the rest of London. That is how you can do local advertising. So you can set it by city and you can also target people in close proximity, which you can choose also. Now, we can also target via country. So United States, for instance. Now, what we could do is we could target the United States but exclude California. And this has been something that I've been known to do because sometimes California can actually make your ads more expensive because it's such a large state. So that's how you can do the whole include and exclude thing. So it's all about what is your business? Who does it appeal to? What countries do they live in? So for me, I would be looking for people in the United States because I sell Udemy courses. So we include United States as a country. There we are. They're included. We include United Kingdom. These are the two markets that are very, very appropriate for my product because people in these countries are potentially going to be interested in my social media products. So I'm going to include these countries for now. And then what it does is it gives you the potential reach of your ad. So it combines the populations of both countries and it puts it here, your potential reach. Now, I've not been specific so far, so let's carry this on. So now we move to age. So what age do we want to target? So I want to target people between 20 and let's say 50. So this will now filter it to 162 million people. Now, I want all men and women, but this is based on what you are marketing. 
So are you marketing makeup products? If you're marketing makeup products, you would want to select women. If you're advertising to a younger age, then you probably want anywhere between, you know, you want anywhere between 16 and 24, let's say. And then this will give you 25 million people. That is now the potential reach if you were to target everybody in those countries with these demographic details. Okay, so let's go back to what I was looking for. So let's go 20 to 50 and all. And this brings it back to 162 million. That's quite wide. Now enter a language. Now my courses are spoken in English. So I'm going to select English all. But if you are, let's say, for instance, targeting people in France, you can select French. If you're targeting people in Spanish speaking countries, you can put Spanish. So really, it's up to you what spoken language or written language you want them to be able to understand. Because ultimately, when you're promoting a post, it will either be video or it will be text. And in which case, they need to be able to understand it. So you've got to choose the appropriate language. Then targeting. This is where you can be very detailed about the demographics, interests or behaviours of people. So, for instance, if I was to target small businesses, let me see what options it gives me for small business. So it gives me small business as an interest, as a title, as an employer, field of study. Then it gives me small business owners. If we carry on looking down, we've got more. You know, small business funding, small business heroes, small medium sized businesses. So it gives you a wide variety of different options. If I was choosing Facebook ads, then I'll have a look here. So it's got interests, Facebook. Doesn't really have a lot else about Facebook ads. Facebook page admins. So the people who would be interested in Facebook ads may already run a page. So their behavior, as Facebook detects it, is face Facebook page admins. So I would select Facebook page admins. I may also be interested in people who have already selected Udemy as an interest, in which case you can put people who have put Udemy as an interest, or additionally or alternatively, you can put people who have listed Udemy as a school or university. But I'm going to leave it as interest for now. But here you can be very specific about who it is that you are targeting. Now, people who are age between 16 to 24 and looking for a makeup product, if they are environmentally conscious, they may not actually be interested in your product. So you should really look for people who list makeup as a job title or an interest. So fashion and makeup you could put there. If, for instance, you were selling consulting solutions, then what you could do, so if, if for instance, you were selling financial consulting, you could put financial services, you could put financial advisor, you could put finance down, and you could look for finance personnel under job titles. So you've got them all here. So a range of different options. And when you select one, let's say, for instance, we choose finance director, then we can look for another one, which it will look for in addition to the one that you've already sent. So finance minister, let's say, for instance, now it takes our reach down to 30,000 people. So we're getting way more detailed. We are now drilling down to that appropriate sized audience that we can sell our page or our offer to. So this is really, really useful. And this has been a really key way of how I've been able to get my products sold with Facebook advertising. So we're going to just put Facebook page admins for now. And then what we can do is we can put people that are connected with your page in some way. So if we look at connections and Facebook pages, for instance, we can exclude people who already like your page. So this will advertise to people outside of your page. Now, you may say, why would you include or exclude people who like your page? Well, you would include the people who like your page because when you put a post on Facebook, about 1% to 10% of people will ever see it. So the people who already like your page may be really interested in your product, but might not be able to see the post because their timeline is flooded with posts. 
So you can include and exclude people who already like your page. So in my instance, what I would do is I would include people who like my page because these are people who have already subscribed to me. Now, by doing so, I have fewer than a thousand people. So what I could then do is exclude them. And then this would give me 37 million people. If I actually didn't put any condition on it at all, then I would be able to advertise to all. So we're going to put exclude the people who like your page. OK, now we come to placements. Show your adverts to the right people in the right places. OK, so automatic placements means your adverts will be automatically shown to your audience in the places where they're more likely to perform best. This will help you reach your objective better. But if you want control over it, you can actually decide where you want it placed. So you can have it being seen on Facebook, on Instagram. You can have it seen on desktop only or mobile only or all devices. But basically, Facebook with automatic placements gives you the best performing option. And that's why they recommend it. But if you really want to make it only available to people on mobile or, pe or people only on Facebook and not Instagram, you can edit your placements. So there we are. That is how you build an audience. You have to test it. You have to make sure that you are testing. Right, okay, so if it didn't work, maybe United States isn't the option. Or maybe I should just exclude California. Or maybe I should include California and exclude the rest of the US. Who is your ad most ideally suited to? And you should know in your mind who the ideal customer is that you're looking for. If you run a beauty business and you want and you market only to women and you market only in the local area, there we are. There's your demographic. And you can really be specific about the interests and what these people do. By getting the right audience, you are setting yourself up for real success with Facebook ads. So in this section, what you've learned is how to find the correct audience for you, regardless of your objective. If you've got the right audience for you, then this is something that you can use time and time again. So before you go to the next column, what you need to do is you need to save the audience. If you save the audience, it means that you can keep this audience forever. So you can just put here ideal audience product. And there we are. And then you would just click save and then that would be forever in your saved audiences up here. So if you wanted to do an ad, it would quickly pre-populate everything with your ideal audience, everything that you've already created in here. OK, so I'm going to take this off just in case it charges me three thousand dollars and we'll put the daily budget there. Now, let's go down to this bit so we optimize for advert delivery so for this instance i have chosen the objective to be page like so we'll deliver your ads to the right people to help you get more page likes at the lowest cost bid amount let facebook set the set the bid to help you get the most page likes at the best price so basically what you're doing is you're saying right facebook I'm giving you $25 as a daily budget okay now what i want you to do is get me the best cost per like do it automatically or you can enter a bid of how much page likes are worth to you so you could enter something like 0.45 usd which is probably the worst thing because if you did a suggested bid of 0.45 then if they actually cost you 0.01 then you have just done yourself out of 44 cents per like so don't do the suggested bid just do automatic and let facebook find the right cost for you when you charged per impression advert scheduling so you can actually decide how you want the adverts to run so for instance let's set this back to lifetime if you're doing a lifetime what this allows you to do is this allows you to set when exactly the ad will be shown so like it says here for example if you select 8 a.m to 10 a.m your advert will be served to people at 8 a.m to 10 am their local time okay so you just select you know the segments that you want it to be i don't know why you do it overnight but that's just so you know that's how you select it okay so we'll go back but that's how you can customize when your advert is actually shown it's actually very very clever 
because it means that you're not wasting money overnight when people are in bed. Then delivery type, you can actually do an accelerated option. And this only works with manual bid for some reason, but accelerated means it just shows your advert as to as many people as quickly as possible. It doesn't do it throughout the day, which means that you're probably just going to waste money sending it out to a load of people that may not be appropriate. Whereas Facebook with standard will decide when the best people are going to be around and they will actually be able to interact with your ad better. Then you can give your ad set a name. It's a bit like saving your audience. So we'll give the ad set a name and literally you just call it US and GB 20 to 50. That's what I would do. Or alternatively, if I chose, let's say, the high cost countries like the US, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, then you could just put high cost countries. And this will appear in your advert manager so you know exactly which the ad set you have targeted is. Now, once you've done that, you just go to continue and then you decide on what it is your audience sees. So I hope that this has really helped and I'll see you in the next lecture. Custom audiences. Now, there are two options that you can select. Number one is that you can actually choose an audience that you've already created. Or number two, you can build it. And I'm going to assume that you haven't yet built one yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a custom audience. So the way to do that is to go to your adverts manager, go to all tools and then go to audiences. And here are all of the custom audiences that I've built for my ads. So it says what the audience is called, what the type is, how many people are in it, if it's already been approved by Facebook and what data was created. So how do you create an audience? You do that by going to create audience. Now there are three options. One is a custom audience, which is what we're just talking about. There's a lookalike audience. And then three is a saved audience. So let's look at custom audiences. Let's select that as the option. And we've got a few options here. You can create an audience out of a customer list that you've already got, like for instance, an email list that you may have generated. Do you want to build a custom audience out of website traffic? Do you want to create a custom audience out of people who have downloaded or interacted with your apps? And then lastly, and this is brand new, these are people who have viewed or engaged with any of your videos or content on your Facebook page. So if we click this here, you can select which type of content they interacted with, whether that be video or a lead advert or a canvas. So we'll go to video and you can select people who have viewed, let's say, three seconds, people who have viewed 10 seconds or people who have viewed at least 25 percent of your video. You can decide. There have been a lot of people that have come to my page, seen like 10, three to 10 seconds of a video and then went away. And these may be people that I want to capture again. So it's good that Facebook gives you this option that you can actually target your ads to people who have interacted with your page before. This is brilliant because when you have such a wide reach of your videos and these people haven't gone on to like your page, then this is still a way in which you can target and market to these people. And Facebook keep that information to benefit you in that way. And that's fantastic. So I could select people who have viewed at least 10 seconds of my video and then choose the video that they have seen. You've got to select the page first. So I'm going to select Supo Man here. And I did a video the other day called Population Count and it had 32,000 people see it. So I'm going to put Population Count. Select this one here by clicking the tick and then confirm. So this only happened three days ago. So I'm going to put it in the past... I'm going to put the past three days and then I'm going to give this audience a name. So 10 second viewers and then create audience. And then that will create an audience for me in the background. So now that we've looked at custom audiences, which you can build basically from either customer files, traffic data, which you have done from installing a website pixel on your website or people who have engaged with your content already. Now let's look at lookalike audiences. So a lookalike audience is Facebook finding people with the same characteristics 
as an audience that has done something with your page. So for instance, here I've created lookalike audiences for people who have liked my Superman page. And what Facebook does is they take that data and they find it per country. So let's create a lookalike audience. So we're going to select my Superman page. And what it's found is that most of the people that like my page are from Bangladesh for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to the United States. And what it's going to find is it's going to find people on Facebook who are similar to my most valuable audience. So it's going to find me the same kind of people that have liked my page already, but they're going to find these people from the US. So same characteristics as people from Bangladesh let's say, and they're going to look for the same kind of people in the US. And then you can dictate what percentage of the country you want to include in this lookalike audience. Now, smaller audiences always work best. So I normally go for 1%, but you can select whatever you want, whatever the potential reach you want is, and then you can always target that audience down the line. So I've already done a US audience that's 2%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Great Britain. And I'm going to do 2% of that and then create audience. And then it says here not ready. It's updating the audience, but it literally takes about 30 seconds. And it will basically find me people who look just like my current audience. So I've refreshed it and it's ready just like that and similar to this one now the 10 second viewers it said that i didn't have enough people for but actually they found out there's 11,000 people so facebook have finally got their act in gear and they've actually found those people so there we are there's my custom audience so you can see here that you can create really good audiences if you haven't got website traffic if you haven't got a mailing list you can still create a really good audience that you can target your ads to that look very similar to people who have been successful audiences in the past now i'm going to take you through something called audience insights audience insights is a incredibly powerful tool to build audiences when you haven't got a mailing list you haven't got website traffic you don't want to look at lookalike audiences you've never ever tried to look for an audience before this is a really effective way and i'm going to show you why right now so if we go to audiences at the top assuming we're still in the audience page but you can just go to whatever tab is at the top left and then if we go to plan, which is the first tab along, and go down to audience insights. So when we click on that, what this is, is it's simply a tool that Facebook lets you use and gives you access to all of their information about everybody on Facebook. And what we can do is we can input specific pieces of information and Facebook will build an audience for us and tell us how well the audience will perform based on the information that you select. Okay, so this is what the screen looks like when you select audience insights. So you can start with everybody on Facebook, people connected to your page or a custom audience. What I recommend you do is just close this, go to the X and we're going to build an audience from scratch okay so the same drill but with much more information than I've showed you already so this is very similar to starting an audience from scratch like we did in the first place what happens is you start from a position where they give you a country and they give you how many people are active within that country what your potential reach is so right now it's just giving me people in the United States and what they look like so let's take my Facebook ads course. Let's try and find an audience of people who might be likely to buy this course. Okay, so those people probably speak English. So I'm going to include English speaking countries. So I'm going to select the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and Ireland. There's probably a lot more that I could target, but I'm just going to leave it as this for now. So now it says that we've got 250 million to 300 million monthly active people. 
Now, if you wanted to actually select a more local audience, let's say you were doing local business marketing, then you would select actual towns or cities. So instead of putting in the United States or United Kingdom, you would put in, let's say, Los Angeles or San Francisco. So I have found that the people who interact with my courses the best are people that are 20 to 50 years old. So I'm going to put 20 to 50 here. And that whittles us down to 150 to 200 million. Now, if I'm going to be really picky, I'm going to say that my courses perform better with men than with women. Especially because men seem to interact more with my videos than women do. So I'm going to select men. And this moves it down to 90 million to 100 million now. now so now Facebook are now giving me information on these men. Now, if we look here, if we actually selected women, women are a larger population in these countries. So 53% of the Facebook population that we had before we chose men were women. So of the men that are on Facebook, they give me a load of information, common information about them. We can see what kind of lifestyle they lead and what the highest percentage is. We can see their relationship status. So we can see here that 37% of the selected audience are single, 20% are in a relationship, 5% are engaged, and 37% are married. So similar numbers there. We can look at the education level. So a third finished high school. 64%, a large number, went to university, and 7% were postgraduate. That's just amazing information that Facebook give you. And Facebook will also tell you what kind of pages these people like to follow. So if we go into here, we can see the most popular page likes for this population. So we can see here, gaming is massive. Call of Duty, Xbox, PlayStation, Rockstar Games, who are the guys who made Grand Theft Auto 5. We can look at the locations where most of the people are based. So we've got 10% of people in London, 8% of people in New York. It will show you what activities that they frequently do. It will show you how interactive they are on Facebook. It will show you what their household income is. It will show you their household size, market value. This stuff is incredible. And we can also see their online purchasing behavior right here. This allows you to see right are you targeting the right kind of people you know 75 percent of this audience purchase things online so you can see there's a high percentage of online purchasing and you can also see that a lot of people are spending in retail and you can see what they're spending their money on the alarming thing is that business purchases is quite small on the grid compared with food and drink subscription services household services health and beauty marvelous information that they give you but the most important part of this page for you is this one the demographics this is where we can target people in a very detailed way so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the interests bit so the ideal for me is to put my ad in front of people who already like similar entrepreneurs, similar Facebook ads entrepreneurs to me. So my real objective, and this is something that is super brilliant about this process, is that I want to be able to find people who have like similar entrepreneurs to me, people who have engaged with similar products to the one that I'm offering. And this is the magic of this area because this is what I'm able to do. So we want to look at the kind of pages that these guys are following. So I want to see how many of these people are interacting, let's say, with Gary Vaynerchuk. So there he is. He's there as an actual interest. Let's look at some more. Let's look at Jerry Banfield. Let's also look at Kim Gast because she also does Facebook ads. Let's look at Social Media Examiner, which is quite a popular blog for people in the whole social media game. And now we've whittled it down to 1.5 to 2 million. 
So these are people who are more likely to engage with me because they have similar teaching styles and sell similar products to me. So my ad is more likely to work on these people because what they do compared to me is very similar. Other things that we could do is things like Facebook advertising. We could do Facebook for business. So now we're going to go over to page likes and watch what happens now. So now Facebook are saying to me, right, we kind of get the gist of what you're trying to do. You're trying to build an audience of people who identify with teacher, entrepreneur, education, public figure, vitamins and supplements, health and beauty. That's right. I'm trying to amongst these kind of three here and maybe public figures as well. So what we can see here, and this is the absolute magic. This is saying to me, right, you've got these two people. Now, people who interact with Jerry Banfield have an affinity score of 30.8 times. That means that when I target the people that follow Jerry, they're 30.8 times more likely to interact with me than the average person. If I look at Gary Vaynerchuk, if I target his followers or the people that like his page, which Facebook have the information on, they're 18 times more likely to like my page over the average person. But the good thing is, is that this actually encourages me to choose other people. So let's say Grant Cardone. So his audience are 11 times more likely to follow me than the average person. So what I can do then is I can add Grant Cardone. And now he jumps up to 30.8 times because it's changed the way that Facebook is viewing the information because Facebook can now see I'm targeting Grant's kind of area of business than Jerry. So it's changed the landscape now. So they think that I'm looking for an audience more like Grant Cardone. So this is really good because this now gives me even more options. Now, if I take out let's say Facebook for business and Facebook advertising, this now increases my affinity score. If I take out social media examiner, then the affinity score is increased even more. So Facebook are giving me really good information on who are the people that are most like me that I should target in order to get 36 to 33 times more likes than the average person. So instead of doing the original ad that I had, which is targeting people in the US, targeting people in the UK, looking for people who like Udemy, that is being very generic. This, however, is being very specific. They are showing me how much more likely these pe the people who like these pages are to follow me if I market to them. So... Now that I've got this information, which is brilliant, I've got the age, I've got the gender, I've got the interests. What I can also do is I can go to the advanced option here and I can look for people who spend a certain amount of money. And I can target people who have a certain income. So if I go for people about 75 to, to 100,000, 50 to 75,000, we can see the Grant Cardone is definitely the person I should be targeting. So we can take off Jerry Banfield, we can take off Kim Gast, and that increases the score. So now I'm looking at people who have the spend and are more likely to like my page. So now that I've got that information, what I can do, and this is the awesome part, is I can go to Create Advert using the Advert Creative tool. I need to select my campaign. So promote my page, page likes, and it has automatically pre-populated that data I've just selected onto this list. Perfect. And I've got 2 million people, quite a small size. So now what I'll do is I will promote my page to these guys. Got it here. And what I'll put is I'll put, this will be the Grant and Gary fans. Then continue. And there we are. Then I can promote my page to an audience that are 50 times more likely to interact with me than the average person. This is how Facebook audience insights can be magic to you. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to another lecture.
Now in this lecture what we're going to talk about is page post engagement ads. Now page post engagement ads are basically a way of boosting a post that is on your timeline and putting it in front of more people via advertising. Okay, so we've got this post right here. This was my live Facebook ads tutorial, how to get Facebook page likes for 0.0036 and start building a viral page. Now, this was a business post, okay? So this has a benefit for me if I boost it. So when I initially posted it, it posted to around about 3,000 people. I then boosted the post to put it in front of 43 thousand people and as a result I got 7,000 more views and I got a lot more sales because what this did was this sent people to my complete Facebook ads course so by boosting the post I am increasing the visibility of it in front of more people but I am able to boost it to people who I think are more likely to buy it so if you boost it and I've already taken you through how to do an ad and how to build an audience. If you boost it to the right people, you can get sales from this. If you boost it to just anyone, you're unlikely to get results. You've got to have your audience. Hence why we went through how to build an audience first so that you know how to select the right audience for this post to be shown to. Okay, so we could do a business post. We could also do a fun post. Now, this was a fun post. I didn't boost this at all, but this had quite a good reaction from the people who are watching. This one I haven't boosted. This is more of a fun one. However, this has got a business benefit because this is my YouTube gaming channel. So if people like what they see here, by boosting it, I'm more likely to get subscribers going to this link here, clicking in it and subscribing to me. And I do this on a lot of my posts when I'm gaming. Okay, so I make sure that they have a benefit to boosting it to the people who I think are more likely to respond to it. Okay, so you've seen a number of posts here. And you can see here, you know, that I've put here, this would be a good one to actually share because I've put more at my YouTube channel helped me reach 10k subs. I've since gone well over 10,000 subscribers since I posted this. But this would be a really good post to boost in order to actually get more subscribers. Okay, so you've got to select the post that is doing well for you and post that has a benefit to it. The whole point of page post engagement is to get more engagement happening on your post. So engagement are these figures here, okay? Engagement are views, post views, reactions, shares, comments. And as you can see here, there's 142 comments. You can see here there's 936 comments and a lot of views, a lot of reactions. So it's only worth boosting posts that have already had a good result from your organic traffic. OK, so if your organic traffic are showing signs that they really like your content and these are so many reactions, so many views, so many comments, so many shares. This tells me this is worth promoting the primary way to drive the costs down of your ads is by having a lot of engagement happening on it. Ads are only expensive when you serve them and people don't respond to them. If people just look at your post and they think, meh, that's rubbish, and move on to the next post, that is where you're going to lose money. You only drive the costs down the more reactions and engagements you get on your post. Hence why it's called page post engagement. If it's not getting engagement, you are not going to be getting the results. And you're certainly not going to be paying low costs for your ads. Okay, so as you can see here, this particular stream, how to live stream like a pro. This is directing people to my complete Facebook ads and marketing course. Because what I'm doing is I'm putting learn all the tips and tricks that can help you reach a million people a day. All right. So this is worth putting a page post engagement add on. So how do you boost the post? There's this option right here. Boost your post to reach more people. 
Now when you click that, what happens is, is it gives you this tiny little window. Now I've already shown you the complete create ad interface, okay? You can see that what I've shown you already is much more vast than this. Now this will allow you to actually boost this to a saved audience and all of that, but it gives you much less control over when your ad is shown, who you're showing it to, because it gives you very little options here. So what you do is, you don't do it via the blue button. So yes, I do want to go away from that. So I don't want to press that, I don't want to press that, I don't want to press that, I don't want to press any of the buttons on this page. For this, we need to go back to our ads manager. So what we're going to do is we are going to put create an advert. This is the best way and it gives you the most control of your ad. So we come to this page here and what you want to do is you want to go to boost your posts. This is basically a page post engagement ad. So we will click that and we can name it too. So we can call this live stream sales post. And then continue. Now we have already gone through how to create a saved audience, how to create a custom or lookalike audience. And we have also gone through how to create a saved audience through audience insights. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a saved audience and we're going to go to Facebook page admins because this is my target market. These are the high cost countries. These are the countries that actually respond and buy from my ads. So I've got those selected. This is the age range, the people who tend to be my target market. I go for the English language and I look at Facebook page admins under interests. So I've got a relatively large reach, a massive pot of people to reach, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am now going to select the budget and as I've already said to you, the best thing to do is to start small because it allows you to see, has this ad been successful? Is it doing well using a $5 budget? And if it is doing well, if it is getting some good page post engagement, if I'm getting a really good cost for my ad per engagement, then it's worth scaling up to much, much more than $5. But we want $5 because we want to quality test the ad. We want to make sure it's getting good results for us initially. So now that we've got that, we have to give our advert set a name. So I'm going to call this high cost because these are the high cost countries and page admins. Continue. And this is where you select the post. So it's automatically put Superman here. And that is the correct Facebook page I'm wanting to boost a post from. And I've got quite a few. Anyway, and then what you have to do is you have to select a page post right here. And you just scroll down and find the one that you want. And the one that I want is this one right here. So we're going to click that. And this is how it will appear on the news feed. We can see how it appears on other feeds if we just go across like this. So this is the desktop feed. This is what it looks like on a mobile feed. Feature phone isn't coming up. This is what it would look like in the desktop right hand column. And then Instagram. But because this is a live video, it's not compatible with Instagram. So now that we've got that, all we need to do is place the order. And that is precisely how you boost your ads like a pro. That's how you do it properly, and that is how a page post engagement ad works. So the best thing to do is to put a page post engagement ad on something that gives you a benefit. Okay, you want to put it on a post that will deliver you sales or deliver a result for you. So for me, it would either be sales to my Udemy courses or it would be subscribers on my YouTube channel. So make sure that you choose something that delivers a good result for you. If I'm just to show you another example of where you'd use it, if I go to one of my other pages, and this is for my local town, I've created a page for my local town. And 
What I probably want to do is I probably want to increase my likes. So a way of doing that is to not only do a likes campaign, which I'm going to show you in a moment, but it would be to boost a post which seems to be doing well for my page. So if I scroll down here, there are two posts which are doing really well for my page. This one, which is a Facebook live stream, this was a live stream I did, which basically pit the two towns, so it's Newbury and Thatcher and Berkshire, these are the two towns that my page covers, and it was getting people to react, and to either put like if they preferred Newbury, or love if they preferred Thatcham. So what I put here is, Newbury versus Thatcham, which one wins? React for your favourite one. This is doing really well. This is saying, this is performing better than 95% of your posts. So this may be a good one to try and get likes from. So what I could do is I could boost this in an attempt to get likes as well as increase the engagement on the post. This particular stream here, this one about Donald Trump where people had to react and press whichever emotion button represented how they felt about Donald Trump becoming the US president. That worked really well for getting me likes. As you can see here, I had 35,000 views, which is an insane number of views, considering this page has only got 4,000 likes. But as a result of that stream, I actually got 97 new likes. So having a good post will get people to like your page. Simply telling people sometimes to like your page isn't going to make them, because they need to know why. And this kind of post gives them a reason why, because it's fun, it's engaging, it's making them react to something, something that another page may not be doing. The only thing that's missing from this is the call to action. So as you can see from as so as you could see from my previous posts, I had like my YouTube page or go to my Facebook ads course on Udemy. This one has no call to action. That's why I didn't see as many people liking this. Only 100 people liked it, considering 35,000 people saw it. Had I put a call to action on here saying, don't forget to like the page or make sure you like this page, I would have got possibly hundreds more likes. Okay, so make sure you've got the call to action. Make sure you've got an engaging post. If you get this kind of notification from Facebook, this is telling you that it's doing well compared to other posts. So it would be a good idea to try and boost a post to get more likes. But make sure you put a call to action on it before you put an ad on it. And it's quite simple to do. If you haven't done it already, all you need to do is just go to this drop down arrow, put edit post, it will present the post to you and all you have to do is put please like this page if you had fun and then put save and then now you have got the post edited and this is now worth putting a page post engagement ad on it. So I hope that this has helped you with page post engagement ads and when you should use them. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Right, in this lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to do a likes campaign. Now, a likes campaign has one purpose. The purpose is getting people to like your page. That is why you would use a likes campaign. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got 4,532 likes. That's nice and all, but when you consider that Newbury has around about 70,000 people in it, this is a small proportion. So I want to get more likes. So how to do that is simple. You just go straight to your advert manager. So go to create adverts. And here we go. Then what you do is you select promote your page. This is your objective. Promote your page equals likes campaign. So promote your page. And we will put Newbury page likes. Now this is where you can go local. So you have to select your page. So I'm going to put new Newbury and Thatcher and Berkshire. Now the saved audiences that I've got are more relevant to Supoman. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to create an advert 
for the local area. So we need to add locations from scratch. So if we put in Newbury, I want current city only. Then I want Thatcham. Thatcham, England. We want current city only. Now, something that's really worth doing when it comes to deciding what ages you should target is to go to your Facebook page, go into Insights. This is assuming you've already got a few likes on your Facebook page. So if we go into Insights, and then we go down and have a look at people, we can actually see which are the most engaged fans. So we can see here 69% are women, 70% are women, and mainly in the 25 to 44 category. So placing an ad to this category would not be a wasted ad. And the reason why is because we know that these are the guys who are more likely to like my page than these guys and these guys, okay? So what we're going to do based on this info is we are going to go to the adverts manager. We are going to go for 25 to 44. We're going to select women. This is pre-populated with dog lovers, mental health for some reason. So we'll take those off. Now we've got 11,000 people. So now that we've got a clean slate, I don't know quite why it pre-populated, but never mind. So now that we've got those people, what we can do is we can actually put something in the detail targeting, but I'm not going to because it won't really matter what you put for interest. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now connections, so you can put whether the people like or don't already like your page. So we are going to put people that don't already like the page. There's no point in doing people who like the page for a likes campaign. Okay, so we're going to save this audience and we are going to save this audience as Newbury fans. Okay, so that now I know who the main Newbury fans are, I want to be able to use them for repeat ads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start small. I'm going to put $3 and see how this works. Now, what I can say to you is with $3, now what I can say to you is that I have done likes campaigns where I've got 0 0.004 of a dollar per like. That's less likely to happen here because the reach is small. But what you're guaranteed is to get high quality likes when you do pay to reach them. And because these are the people who are more likely to engage with the ad than men or other women who are not within the 25 to 44 age group, you're more likely to get positive reactions from this. That's why I say go to the insights and select the fans who are more likely to engage with your ad because it will only cost you more when people just pass your ad. You want more people to react to your ad than to ignore it. If people ignore it, it costs you. So now that we've got $3, it tells us it'll reach about 1,000 to 3,000 people in my demographic. I'm now going to put Newbury fans. I'm going to put W for women, 25 to 44, and then continue. Now, this is the hard part. The hard part is finding an image that they will engage with. Now, if we go back to my page, the best thing to do would be to look at what are the posts that have engaged people best. Now, this one here, this one, Newbury versus Thatcham, this has performed the best for engagement. And the reason why is because it's fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this image here, which I used for the live stream. OK, but if you are wanting to find out what pictures of people reacted to best, you go into insights, go to look at posts. And what you'll see here is how people have reacted to your posts. And you can basically have a look and see what posts have been your most successful. So these two in recent months have been really successful. So is this one here. But I'm going to use this one right here because it is simple in terms of giving them a call to action. This one here, this brain teaser, they're more likely to want to solve the brain teaser than like the page. So this one is better. So I like this post, so I'm going to use that picture. 
So what you need to do is you need to upload that picture. So we'll delete the one that they're giving me, which is the header of my page, and find the post that I used the other day. So here is the post, so I'm going to select that now. Okay, so we've got the image right here, and you can actually choose to edit this part here. So what I'm going to put is, so I'm going to put like this page if you're a resident of Newbury or Thatcham. And you like to have fun. So this gives a good call to action and it appeals to the people, the young kind of ladies in my area that like to have fun when they are on Facebook. So where's it going to be? It's going to be on the timeline. Okay, so now that we have got our ad and we have chosen something that is more likely to get positive reactions, we will place the order. Now it does say your advert may not run because it's got some text on it, but let me tell you something, it does normally convert. So we'll place the order. And we've got it. And that is how you do a likes campaign that works. I hope you've enjoyed this course. I hope you've learned a lot about how to navigate through the Facebook Ads Manager, how to build an audience in a super effective way, and how to run the most popular ads you can on Facebook, which are the page post engagement ads and the likes campaign. I've been Super Man, your superhero, and I hope to see you in another course. Thank you for being here with me.